Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again. This is Monday morning. And it's just what? Sunday, Saturday, Friday. Three days from the time that I was under the knife. So I'm still here. And I'm feeling somewhat okay. But a lot of pain going on. And I find myself this morning couldn't sleep because I was thinking about the people here in America and the pain and suffering that we are enduring and why. And I was thinking, ladies and gentlemen, something that we could all uh, identify with. And that perhaps is a lot of the sicknesses and diseases that we have to endure. Well, I believe everybody that hear my voice have had some or know someone who has to endure cancer. And cancer is one of the most devastating diseases or sicknesses that anyone could ever endure. No one wants to because it, at the end of the day, kind of spells death. Yes, that's right, death. Cancer does not leave you too many times with life. I keep thinking about my own family. I've had so many family members that just passed on because of cancer and there was nothing that could be done about it. And I think about how devastating cancer is, how you can get a uh, spark one day and then before long it can be in every part of your body just r taking life away from you. And I know most people when they are in the situation, they pray, God, let me live. God, take this cancer away from me. I believe in you. I got faith that I trust you. They say all kinds of things trying to deal with this cancer. And then I think about America today. I think about this, the ugliness of America, the pain of ugliness, hatred and racism and bigotry. That's the expressive form of our cancer in America. And then I think about the, I don't know how to refer to this one, but maybe it's the nucleus cancer and it's Donald Trump. I think about Donald Trump and how just being on the scene, all of this other cancer and spread it all over this nation. He could have been here all along. I'm sure it didn't just pop up, but it was dormant. And then this main cancer came along and gave all of this other cancer permission to stand up and do his damage to the American society. I think about this cancerous uh, Trump that says how wonderful strong leaders are like Putin and Chi Tia, Chi, what is Chi? Some guy named in China or some dude in North Korea and North Korea and he just loves them. And he's the best friend with all of them. And he wants all of the cancerous nests in America to realize that he is connected with these great leaders, great leaders. Well, I can't understand why he won't go over there and join them. But he wants to turn America into this big cancerous thing. Well, you know, that cancer and there's other parts of the world have been all along. But America chose not to be a cancerous nation. That's why we have been as we are and yet here this guy is spreading cancer spreading cancer it seems to me that when the people get cancer they go to the doctor they do what they can to get rid of it and here we are this nation where cancer is infesting all over us and we're not doing anything about it we're just allowing it to spread every day we allow it to spread Whatever it needs to spread, a microphone, a piece of paper, 
uh, television camera, uh, telephone, anything. Just spread this cancer, spread this cancer. I can't understand it. Sometimes I, I remember in the Bible, I don't know if they would consider that now, they would take people who just was distasteful and sent them out of the country. Put them on a desert island somewhere. Put them in a, you know, and let them live where they don't have to cause disaster and danger to other people. Maybe in Russia, Trump could live. Maybe in China, or North Korea, Philippines, or someplace, just send him someplace. Not send him, get him out of here. Some then people say, well, we just have to, this is America, we have to let the cancer grow. Well, I guarantee you let the cancer grow, the nation will be destroyed just like anybody else. Anybody else, this nation will be destroyed just like any individual. Well, I don't think they will uh, put him out of the country. So they'll just allow, allow him to sit here and fester and fester. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that this will destroy America. A man talking about killing his enemies. A man who puts himself above God. I mean, people don't obey God, but this guy's gonna force you to obey him, force you to love him, force you to be obedient, whether you love him or not, do what I say. It's amazing. I'm finding there's, this, there's a word that represents when you take a person out of a nation and put him someplace else, it's, I, feel, I knew what the word was, and I know what the word is. I just can't think of it right now. A few moments ago, I was going to use that word, and then I'm in my 70s, so you know that word just jumped out of my head. I don't know what it is, but you know what I'm talking about. It'll probably come back to me if I talk long enough. But anyway, <clears throat> if we can't find a doctor to take the cancer out of you, the cancer out of your relatives, the uh, cancer out of your friends, they will die. If you don't find some way to extract this cancer called Donald Trump from um, the American society, the people spreading that cancer all over this nation, America will die. It won't be around again. And simply because the people allowed Donald Trump to continue to exist in America. And as I think about it, cancer doesn't really have any sense. I think about people who are picking up guns, who are just spreading lies, and they'll tell you, we don't care if our leader is a liar. We don't care if our, in fact, they're really saying they don't care if their leader is from the pit of hell. They will follow him because if he's from the pit of hell, it's the best thing that ever happened for them. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? If the cancer, if Trump represents the pit of hell, he's the best thing that ever happened to them. One thing you should be able to learn from Trump, though, is this. You've always said he had a, ate with a silver spoon, a golden spoon or something, golden toilets and stuff like that. Had never suffered for anything, just get what he wants. And this is how people who have that kind of liberty and freedom respond in life. They don't really care about anybody but themselves because to them, nobody is important but them. And many of you who got your children, you raise your children if you wanted to be nice to them, make sure they got the kinds of stuff that you didn't have as you were growing up. And the ones that you were the nicest to usually are the ones that can't stand you the most. And so Trump can't stand this nation because as far as he can see, this nation is against him. And he ain't going for it. Why? Because he's supposed to have whatever he wants. Well, I know I'm talking back and forward now.
So I should allow you to go on and continue what you were doing, but it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important that you banish this man from this country. Find some way to get rid of this man out of this country because the, he is destruction, totally destruction. Uh, I guess maybe I'll close it down now. I just couldn't lay here. Don't even know when I'm going to feel better. And thinking about all this ugliness, all of this filth that is r ripping and running all over this country and the big mouthpiece that's aiding it. So I just had to say something. I don't know if it'll do any good, but I had to say something. So like one who cares about you, I want you to know that Donald Trump means you no good and he's destroying you and you are helping the destruction for this nation. I'll leave it there for now.